Welcome to tutorial 2 where we're going to be looking at the current voltage characteristics of an LED. To begin with we're going to be looking at a variable resistor as we need this component um, in the next few practicals. As you can see from the screen, there are a number of different types of variable resistors. Some of them go by slightly different names in that these are generally uh, known as presets because they need adjusting using a screwdriver, so they're preset to the value and then left. Whereas these ones here and the one we're going to be used have a, an adjustable shaft that can be turned using the hand. We're going to be using a 10 kilo ohm variable resistor. They're always marked on there in some way. They fit nicely into the breadboard. They just snap down into the holes. Sometimes they can be a little loose, so you just need to check that uh, it fits in there well. And the way that we're gonna wire up this experiment is we are gonna use two multimeters, which are gonna be set to resistance. The variable resistor has three legs, of which the middle one is known as the wiper. So we're going to connect the black lead of both, both meters up to the middle leg. We're going to connect one of the meters to one outside leg and we're going to connect the other meter, the red leads, to the other outside leg. When we turn on our meters onto the resistance, we should see the values come up. And as I change the shaft rotation, you will see that the two values are changing. So I'm going to turn it fully anti-clockwise. And when we look at the values that are now on the meters, it shows the left-hand one as 10.25 kilo ohms and the right-hand one as zero. Excellent. So we're going to enter those values into our, onto our sheets, which hopefully you have. So anti-clockwise, we have 10.25 kilo ohms and 0 ohms. Next, we're going to turn the shaft fully clockwise. The values change. And now you can see that on my left hand one it's showing about 1.2 ohms, which is pretty much 0. And we have on the right hand one 10.31 kilo ohms which of course is 10,310. So let's enter that into our table clockwise, 0 ohms and 10.31 kilo ohms. Next it says to turn the shaft so that we're somewhere in the middle. So let's just adjust it so that we're somewhere in the middle. It's not that important exactly what value. So there we go. I've got on my left hand one, 4.13 kilo ohms, and on my right hand one, 6.66 kilo ohms. So let's enter that into the value 4.13 kilo ohms and 6.66 kilo ohms. Now, it says to add up the, the values. So 10.25 plus 0 is 10.25 kilo ohms. 0 plus 10.31 is 10.31 kilo ohms and then 4.13 plus 6.66 is 10.79 kilo ohms. As you can see all the values of the total resistances are about the same. Not perfect but pretty close. Now what is this telling us that a variable resistor does? It basically has two halves and whatever isn't on one half is on the other half. And the total resistance between the two outside pin, pins equals 10,000 ohms. Or as we found out, somewhere around 10,500 ohms. So we can divide up the resistance by using the middle leg, which is known as the wiper. And in the same way, we can use it to divide up voltage, which brings us on to our second activity. So in our second activity, what we're going to do, we're going to connect up a power supply. And we're going to be using the 10K potentiometer 
as it now becomes a potentiometer because we are dividing up the potential difference between the positive and the naught volts. And we're then going to measure the output from the wiper leg, the middle leg, using a voltmeter. So let's wire that circuit up. I'll remove my meters. I'm going to connect one side to positive, one side to negative. I'm going to set my meter to voltage, connect the red to the wiper, connect the black to naught volts, and now I'm going to connect up my power supply. And turn it on and hopefully we should see a voltage appear. Excellent, 3.104 volts. No need for us here to um, have three decimal places so by pressing the range button turning it to manual we've turned it to two decimal places. Okay so let's see what happens when I turn this shaft. As I turn it fully clockwise the voltage goes to 4.97 volts. Remember, it may not be a perfect 5 volt power supply anyway. And when I turn it fully anti-clockwise, it drops all the way down to zero. So what this is saying is that I can adjust the voltage coming in, which is 5 volts, to anywhere between zero and 5 volts by using this variable resistor as a potentiometer. So it's like a variable power supply. Have a look. I'm going to turn it up. I can go to 0.4 of a volt. I can go to 1.16 of a volt. I can go to 2.16 of a volt. I can go to 3.3 volts. And of course all the way up to 5. Next practical. We are going to have a look at now the, the current voltage relationship when we connect a variable resistor in the circuit with an LED. In this case we're going to start by using a red 5mm LED that we used in the previous practical. I'm just going to wire up that circuit very quickly. Disconnect the power. So we have a 100 ohm resistor going to one of the outside legs of the variable resistor. Next, we have the positive of the LED going to the wiper, but I want to be able to put an ammeter into this circuit, so I'm going to connect up that connection via a wire. The other side of the variable resistor has NC, which means it's no connection, because we're just using it as a um, variable resistor. So now, when I connect up my power into this circuit, and I turn it on, my LED should come on. And it does. And hopefully, when I turn that variable resistor and increase and decrease the resistance, which changes the amount of current flowing through it, you will see that the LED gets brighter and dimmer. Okay. What we're now going to do, we're going to fill in our table because we're going to plot a graph of all of our results. But to do that, we need to be able to measure the voltage and the current. So the first thing is I'm going to connect my ammeter into the circuit and it's going to measure the current flowing through the LED. So to do that, I'm going to, as always, break the circuit, which you'll see the LED go off, replace the ammeter in the circuit where that wire went and you will see the LED come back on and you will see that it is now reading a current value. Additionally I'm going to measure the voltage in my circuit. Always connect the black wire down to zero volts and then the red wire goes wherever you want to measure the voltage. In this case we want to measure it at the positive side of the LED. And now we've got a reading. So let's begin. 
let's turn this down we want to first of all take the minimum value that we can read and the minimum value with with the shaft of the variable resistor turn one way is 0.31 milliamps and the voltage is reading let me just rearrange that the voltage is reading 1.79 volts so we have 0.31 milliamps and that reads 1.79 volts next we want to take a reading when we've got one milliamp so i'm going to turn the shaft until that raises up to one milliamp it doesn't matter if we can't get it absolutely spot on we can always put that value down into our table as long as we plot our graph accurately so we have one milliamp and 1.84 volts so that's one 1.84 volts Next, we're going to 2 milliamps. And at 2 milliamps, 1.98, we have 1.88 volts. So at 2 milliamps, we have 1.88 volts. We're going to go up to 4 milliamps. And it reads 1.94 volts. So at 4, we have 1.94 volts. Going to go up to 8 milliamps. That's jumped. There's a good reason for that. There we go. 8 milliamps, and it reads 2.03 volts. 2.03 volts. Going to go up to 16 milliamps. There we go that's close and that's close enough at the moment i can always plot that into my graph and we're sitting at 2.21 volts so at 16.6 milliamps we have 2.21 volts and then finally let's take a maximum current reading we can get in this circuit which is 24.19 milliamps 24.19 milliamps and the voltage reading is 2.37 volts. So when we have very low current, you will notice that the LED is quite dim. And as we increase the current, the LED got much brighter. So we started off quite dim and we went to the brightest level. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to do this experiment for three other components. We're going to be using a yellow LED. We're going to be using a 1N4001 diode. And we're going to be using a 100 ohm resistor. Even though we already have a 100 ohm resistor in there, we're going to leave that in there. So I'm going to remove my red LED. And I'm going to place in my yellow LED and immediately the yellow LED comes on. So we're going to do all these readings again. You can see the LED changing as the current changes through it. So we're going to take all our readings, enter them into the table. And then we're going to plot our graph. We're going to do the same for the diode. Now, just one word warning with the diode. You will see that on the diode, it has a little silver band at one side. The silver band indicates the negative. And when you put it into the circuit, diodes actually have quite thick legs. So they don't always fit that well into breadboards. So it's worth perhaps just grabbing a pair of pliers and pushing the legs down carefully into the breadboard like so always check that when you turn the shaft you've got voltage change and current change okay so let's assume that we've done all four of those experiments and we're going to look at the results so following the sheets you should have plotted a graph of all your results and here we have a graph of those four results we have our 100 ohm resistor we have our diode we have our 
yellow LED, which is drawn as a green line on this graph because yellow wouldn't have been very visible. And we have our red LED. Let's start where we began with the red LED. So what we can see is that with no volts across the LED, we have no current flowing through it. As we increase the voltage across it, we reach a point at which the LED has starts to get brighter and this is because more current starts to flow through it. The point at which the red LED turns on is about there, which is sitting at about 1.8 volts across it. Pretty much of maximum current up here, we can see that the red LED is fully on at about 2.3 volts. The yellow LED follows a very similar to characteristic curve, but it's just a little bit less. So in other words, it starts to turn on at about 1.68 volts, and it would be considered fully on at about 2.15 volts. Our diode, even though there was no visible light, nothing being given off to see, we can see that it has a very similar characteristic curve, albeit where the voltage values are much less than those of the yellow and red LED. So here the diode starts to turn on at about 0.55 volts, and here it would be considered fully on at about 0 0.7, 0 0.75 volts. We'll come on to a diode later on in the electronics course. And then finally, we have a 100 ohm resistor. And as I hope you understand, because of Ohm's law, if the resistance is constant, which it is in this case, and the voltage across it increases, therefore the current through it will also increase proportionally to that voltage increase because the resistance is constant. If we had used any other value resistor, we would have also got straight line graphs, but the line would have been at a slightly shallower or greater gradient, depending on the value of the resistance. What does this actually tell us, these results? Well, probably one of the most obvious things is that because the diodes are not a straight line graph, it probably tells you that the, the internal resistance of the diodes are not constant. In other words, we reach a point at which the resistance turns on the LED, which is when they started to get brighter, and therefore, arguably, the resistance of them must drop because the current through them increases at a great amount. So increase in current because of a drop in resistance. What else do we note about these results? Well, probably the most interesting thing is, if you weren't aware before, yellow and red LEDs do not have the same characteristic graph. Most people think that the coloured plastic to give them their yellow or red colour would just be the coloured glass, but in fact they are manufactured completely differently. There are other diodes for example, blue ones, white ones, high intensity ones. And if we'd looked at those, they would have been on this graph sitting anywhere from about 1.2 volts up to about 3 volts. But I chose these two specifically so you could see the difference and they're all on one graph. This is the end of this tutorial.